Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this lecture we will be discussing about nucleic acids and we will also talk about functions, classification and structure. So this is going to be a full class where we are discussing each of these points. Let me try to make it interesting for you to imagine nucleic acids so that you can actually grab the concept faster. Imagine a cell, a living cell. You know that a cell is made up of different new organelles and all these organelles, they are performing their respective functions. And one of the prominent nucleus, or sorry, one of the prominent organelles present inside the cell is nucleus, which is responsible for governing the functions of the living body. For example, I'm speaking right now, I'm moving my hand, probably you are writing something, you are thinking, you're walking, whatever the daily activities that you all are doing, Everything is because of some information that is carried inside the nucleus. And how is that information carried inside the nucleus? That is in the form of DNA. Now, if you see, if you try to uh, measure the length of the DNA present inside the nucleus, you will find it that it's quite a meters long. Don't you think that how it, is it possible for this long DNA to wrap inside this tiny nucleus present inside this tiny cell, which we can't even see with the naked eye. So that is because the DNA that is wrapped inside the nucleus is in the condensed form, which means that it has been very, very tightly wrapped so that it can be accommodated inside the small space. So this tightly wrapped DNA is done around some histone proteins and collectively that is known as a chromosome. So there are several different chromosomes present inside the nucleus carrying all the information for the functioning of the body. Now, if you unwrap this chromosome, you try to unwrap the thread-like structure of the DNA, you will see that it is made up of DNA helix. It is a helical double-stranded structure like this. And if you look into the DNA, that what exactly this DNA is made up of, you will see that it is made up of certain nucleotides or the base pairs. So nucleic acids are the long chain polymeric molecules of which the monomeric unit is the nucleotides. So different nucleotides, they are joining together to form long chains and these long chains are also called as polynucleotides. Now there are two types of nucleic acids. Nucleic acid, the name itself is suggesting that it has something to do with the nucleus, right? Nucleic acid, and it is having some acidic character. So the two types of nucleic acids that are present inside the cell are DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and there is RNA, which is ribonucleic acid. Talking about DNA, DNA is majorly found in the nucleus, and the DNA that is present in the nucleus is known as the nuclear DNA, or it is also known as genomic DNA. On the other hand side, some of the amount of this DNA is present in the mitochondria and chloroplast of plants as well. If we talk about RNA on the other hand side, it is found throughout the cell. Now let us see the structure of each of the nucleotide in detail. I just told you that the nucleic acids, DNA or RNA, it is made up of small units and this small unit is known as the nucleotide. Now, let's dive deep into the nucleotide itself. This nucleotide has three components. Each of the nucleotide will be having three components. The first component is a phosphate molecule, which is carrying a negative charge. The second component is a sugar molecule, and there are different types of sugars that we will discuss in the next slide. And the third component is a nitrogenous base. So these three components collectively form a nucleotide. And if you look here in the figure, you will see that nitrogenous base is attached to a sugar and a phosphate group. And this complete molecule, this complete molecule is known as a nucleotide. So these are the tiny subunits of the nucleic acids. Now, there are, there's one more term, nucleoside. In some of the exam papers or some... Um, competitive exams, you, you can get this question that what is the difference between nucleoside and nucleotide. So nucleoside is basically the nucleotide without this phosphate group. So there, if there is no phosphate group present inside the nucleotide, then that becomes a nucleoside. 
Now let's see the three components in detail. I just mentioned that nucleotide is made up of three components, the nitrogenous base, the phosphate molecule, and the sugar molecule. So first, let's see in detail that what is a nitrogenous base. So nitrogenous base is nothing but the cyclic structures in which nitrogen is present. And there are two different types of nitrogenous bases found in the nucleic acids. So the first is purines and the second is primidines, right? So of the total uh, nitrogenous bases that are present inside the cell, there are five nitrogenous bases present in total, right? So we have A stands for adenine. We have T, which stands for thymine. We have G, which stands for guanine. And we have C, which stands for cytosine. And we have U, which stands for uracil. So these are the five different nitrogenous bases present inside the uh, nucleic acids. Now, if I have to categorize these five nitrogenous bases into categories, I will say that there are two types of nitrogenous bases. We have purines and we have primidines. So talking about the purines first, so we have, uh, just a second. Okay, so sorry, uh, there was a problem in the slide. So I was talking about the categorization of these nitrogenous bases. So nitrogenous bases, there are two types. We have purines and primidines. When I talk about purines, there are two purines out of the five that I just mentioned. So the purines are adenine and guanine. So this is a purine. And this is a purine as well. And you can see in the structure that there are two rings attached to each other. So it's a heterocyclic ring. On the other hand side, when we are talking about primidines, there are three primidines present. We have thymine, we have uracil and cytosine. And in these three structures, you will see that it is a single ring structure. So these are the primidines. Now, out of these five, which of the nitrogenous bases are present in DNA and which are present in RNA, that is what we are going to see now. So in DNA, there is adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. These four are present. Whereas when we talk about RNA, in the RNA, instead of thymine, there is uracil. So I can say that DNA has adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Whereas in RNA, we have adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine. So these are the two different nitrogenous bases of the nucleotide. So these are the structures of these. The second component of the nucleotide is a sugar molecule. Now, there are two types of sugars again, which are present in the nucleic acids. One is the ribose sugar, and one is the deoxyribose sugar. Ribose sugar is present in the RNA and deoxyribose is present in DNA. That is why DNA is known as deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA is known as ribonucleic acid. What is the difference between the two? So both of these sugars, they are pentoses. Pentoses means that they are five carbon molecule. Now, in case of ribose and deoxyribose, there is only one difference and that difference is around the carbon number two here. So if you can see here, in case of DNA, there is the absence of this oxygen from the position number two. Because of the absence of the oxygen from here, it is known as deoxyribose, right? So that is why it's called that. Now DNA is existing in the form of a double-stranded structure, like as you can see on the screen. So this one molecule is the nucleotide. You can see this is the nucleotide number one. It is attached to the next nucleotide, attached to the next nucleoside, uh, so, sorry, nucleotide, and it is forming a long chain. So these connections, they are being formed with the help of phosphodiester bonds. So the bonds that are present between the two adjacent nucleotides, these are known as the phosphodiester bonds bond. The phosphodiester bond is the bond connecting the two nucleotides in the chain. Now there are two strands of these chains. They are running anti-parallel to each other, which means 
that if one strand is running five prime to three prime direction, then the other strand is running three prime to five prime in the opposite direction, you, may, you mean to say. Now, these bases that are in both the strands, they are also connected to each other via some forces. And these forces are nothing but the hydrogen bonds. So the hydrogen bonds are keeping the two strands of the DNA close to each other. And that is how a double helical structure is formed. So each of the base, it is paired in a specific manner, which means that every base cannot bind to every base. So there needs to be some complementarity between the two bases of the adjacent strands. For example, guanine always pairs with cytosine and adenine always pairs with thymine. Now, when guanine pairs with cytosine, there are three hydrogen bonds present. And when adenine pairs with thymine, there are always two hydrogen bonds present. And similar is in the case of adenine and uracil in case of RNA. But the case is that RNA is a single-stranded molecule. So adenine always pairs with thymine and guanine always pairs with cytosine, which means that purine is binding with a primidine. Now, what are the different features of BDNA? Okay, so the DNA that is present inside the biological bodies, it is in the form of BDNA. So there are different forms of DNA and the primary form is BDNA. That is why it is written BDNA here. Let us see the features of these, uh, this DNA, which is primarily found in the living bodies. And we have just discussed as well. So DNA is the largest biomolecule in the cell and it is negatively charged. Why it is negatively charged? Because of the phosphate group present. So overall, there is a negative charge on the DNA. And DNA has two polynucleotide chains, as I just mentioned, because DNA is existing in the form of double helical structure. And these two strands are running anti-parallel to each other, which means one strand is running five prime to three prime and the other in the three prime to five prime direction. The five prime end basically means the part of the strand on which the phosphate group is exposed, whereas three prime end is on which the OH group from the sugar molecule is exposed. So that is why we call it as five prime and three prime. Now, this, um, the you know that these nucleotides, they are attached to each other to form long bonds, long chains, the polynucleotides. Now, out of this, the phosphate and the sugar molecules, this part, they are on the exterior of the DNA and they are hence called the phospho ph phosphate deoxyribose backbone, right? So this is the backbone. And inside the DNA, the bases, they are connected to each other. Now, you can imagine this DNA structure like a ladder. So you see the sides of the uh, ladder, they are corresponding to the sugar phosphate backbone. And the rungs of the ladder, they are corresponding to the bases pairing with each other. So all this I have just discussed. And what are the functions of nucleic acids inside the living bodies? So DNA, it is the genetic material which carries the hereditary information. And by the process of transcription, the DNA is giving rise to RNA. So DNA undergoes transcription process and RNA is formed. And after that, translation process happens on the RNA and then proteins are formed. So this is the central dogma of molecular biology. And this is how the things are happening inside the body. So everything is coded inside the DNA. So if you want to encode what is written on the DNA, it has to first transcribe into RNA, then it translates into proteins, and these proteins perform their specific functions inside the body. And DNA controls the cell metabolism along with differentiation and development of an organism. Mutations in the DNA help organism evolve and adapt to the changing conditions. For example, the coronavirus that recently hit us, that was also evolving because of the mutations happening inside, the, inside its nucleic acids. And RNA forms the genetic code in several certain viruses such as HIV. So this is the hereditary information of several viruses. We don't say that DNA is the hereditary information in viruses, but rather RNA is. But in case of us human, DNA is carrying the genetic information, the hereditary information. So that was it about the nucleic acids. In the coming lectures, we will talk more about it. Thank you.